Welcome back to this class on textile finishing. What did we do last time? We learnt that wet processing industry is an energy intensive industry. It consumes more water and therefore more liquor is required and more liquor has to be dried and so you have to spend more energy. So less consumption of water will always be a good idea. So we did learn about low liquor techniques or which sometimes were known as minimum application techniques. All right. They were useful, isn't it? They were useful because you less use less water. If you have less water, you evaporate less, evaporate less, less energy is consumed. So in some way, you are helping the environment. And of course, saving some money also. So this energy management, we talked about low liquor techniques. All right. We did talk about the low liquor techniques. Now, what else can be done? So, one is hot flue recycling. So, there is hot flue. That means some gases, exhaust or otherwise. Can we do recycling of that if it is possible? Of course, common sense, prevention of steam and hot water losses and hot water recycling. All of them are methods with which we can use the energy which is already there for the new process, a new process cycle. So that way you can recover. So all this will be in some sense known as the heat recovery processes. So where the heat is wasted or likely to be wasted more, all right, dryers, when you have a dryer, then you have to supply hot air, fresh air which has to be heated, fine. Then the moisture comes out of the fabric in the chamber. Now if it becomes more and more moist, then the rate of uh, drying will obviously be affected. So you want to remove part of the hot air so that fresh air can be brought in. So that the moisture level within the chamber is controlled, optimized. The stenters which do drying as well as curing, you require hot flues are going to be coming, the exhaust will be hot. Dyeing machines where the hot liquor is going to be coming out, preparatory machines there some of the hot liquor may be coming out. And so many processes will are there as the unit operation in the wet processing industry where either the hot water or the hot gas is going to be coming out as a waste. So while it is good that you could use the water, reuse the water after purification, before purification, if possible, whichever way the processes are designed. But what about the heat which they are carrying? What should do that? Should this be allowed to be wasted? The heat, we are talking about the heat. Obviously no, right? So what is the solution? Solution therefore is recover the heat whenever it is possible. So very small short discussion we are doing in this session just to tell in which way you can utilize this heat which is going out of the system. So this in, in short is called the waste heat recovery, all right, waste heat recovery. So what do we require? We require things like called heat exchangers. You must have seen, let us say a motorcycle for example, you are driving the heat is going out of the engine through fins, you know. So you exchange the heat so that the engine is cool, that is right. So heat exchangers are the ones which take the heat away and take it somewhere else. That is how you make the system cool, that is one. Radiator, you understand, it keeps the 
the engine cool but how by an exchange process where the water gets heated in a way so that the engine becomes cool right so that's the heat exchanger so we know in our daily lives we do use heat exchangers to transfer the heat from one to another portion right so what is to be done you know so the waste heat will go from one direction the the fresh air may come from the other direction for example in a dryer or a stenter as we said the humidity levels inside the chamber have to be maintained so if you throw out something because more humidity has generated fresh air will come the fresh air is at room temperature all right so you may like the fresh air which is at room temperature should first somehow come in contact with the waste air exhaust air which is going out so that they can exchange heat if that happens life will be easy so how do we do so the two ways people sometimes have been doing it one is co current flow that is the the gases which are going out or the liquid which is going out and the liquid or a gas which is coming in are actually flowing in the same direction that's called the co current flow for example this is a temperature of the let's say outgoing liquor outgoing i can consider a fluid uh, which is coming from the process all right so this is going in this direction so there is a temperature of the high end temperature of the final temperature of this liquor it can't become uh, you know room temperature it may be slightly higher than room temperature when it comes out because you depends on how much efficient the exchanger has been and the other colder flue also is passing in the same direction so this is called the co current flow so the temperature will come down uh, of the in input liquor will increase the final temperature will be high of the hot flue which is going out it will reduce so at some stage you will have this temperature will be higher than obviously this temperature so you would have exchange some heat and this will be the input to the next process for example then it is a good idea right so based on the length of the contact the hot flu the temperature will keep coming down along the length up to let's say initial temperature of the hot flu final temperature of the hot flu initial temperature of the cold flu and in final temperature of the cold flu so they there was a difference which was large difference will keep becoming smaller and smaller as they are going together in the same direction all right so what happens is in the beginning the rate of heat transfer will be high but at the end the rate a transfer heat will keep on reducing as the length becomes more and more length of this transfer system becomes more and more the rate of transfer will keep on reducing further and further because the difference between the two will keep coming down all right but if it is infinite hopefully the temperature of both the outgoing and the the the, the waste as well as the useful uh, flow flow will be the same but you may not like to go to those kinds of lengths it may be uneconomical because as you increase the length it is not just the length which is increasing some pressure also will be built you know you have to force the liquor in one direction so that resistance also we have to do because there is a viscosity element which comes into the other method which people use is counter current so the hot flu which is going out goes in one direction let's say in this direction it is going while the incoming flu or the liquid is moving in this direction all right so they are counter current 
people sometimes prefer this method the rate of heat transfer almost remains constant here almost remains constant for example the counter current will be something like this the length and the temperature of the hot flue will go like this so which will say t hot initial and t hot final the cold stream will have will also be like this so t cold initial and t cold final and therefore they move in the same direction and the difference between them remains more or less constant the heat rate transfer rate remains more or less same but even if you go for a very long uh, length this approximately remains constant so you know when to stop so so we there can be advantages and disadvantages of both the co current and the counter current uh, processes uh, but both the things can be used based on the requirements what is the temperature difference and how much can you afford the length so one type of systems which can have is called the shell and tube type heat exchangers now this the so called red area you see is a shell through which the blue type of things are tubes moving so you can have the hot things coming the waste coming from this direction from in the shell and going out in this direction and the cold things for example entering in this say we are looking at counter current so this cold one is going and co this is out right so they can flow in the counter current direction the temperature exchange will take place and uh, one would be able to utilize the heat now this can be used this kind of system can be used for liquid liquid it can be used for liquid gas it can also be used for gas and gas also can be used so depends on what you are doing but if it's a liquid gas is more efficient uh, in some sense because what you require is a large surface area so the tubes pass through the shells which are the tubes these are the tubes passing through the shells the fresh liquid is in the tube the waste liquid is in the shell that's the normal arrangement normal arrangement it could be liquid or a gas as i said there may be baffles like these black things that you see these baffles these are the baffle plates so the liquid will have to go in this way go in this direction and then go in this direction and then like this and like this and come out if it is these baffles are not there then the liquid can just pass in one way but now it has to go like this so that's the way it will travel in the shell itself so that there is more chances of coming in contact with the tubes which are carrying let us say the cold uh, fresh liquid or a gas which has to be which will be heated up which will get the exchange of heat so surface area is important so how many tubes that you have so that would make sure how many tubes what is the pressure differential that will be created if you have so many tubes so instead of having one long tube going like this you may have a bundle of tubes through which the liquid is moving from one to the other side good idea more thing but the volume required will be also more material required will also be more but you have to create more surface area for heat transfer length of the tube number of tubes all of them will become design parameters for any 
such heat exchanger. There are some similar type thing which are called the recuperators. It is for gas to gas kind of a thing. So you have a chamber, let's say they got a lot of tubes, for example, these are tubes all over this plate, there can be tubes which are going from one side to the other bottom. The fresh air is forced into this or sucked, whichever way you call it. So, goes through the tube. The exhaust air is allowed to go perpendicular to the tubes and so heat exchange takes place. So, now number of tubes, number of the, the total volume of this unit will decide as to how much efficient will be the exhaust. So, you can definitely have. So, gas to air or gas to gas. So, between the flue gases and air through metallic valves. So, metals hoping that they are obviously conducting, thermally conducting. So, hopefully they will exchange. So, you have to create more surface area as much as you can. The ducts carry the air for preheating. So, this air which is a fresh air will be preheated before going to the process. So, waste heat goes perpendicular across the tubes, not in the tubes, right? Interesting, simple, but it works. Other type of things which we also see uh, are called the heat wheels, heat wheels. So, these wheels are actually rotating. Let us say, you create a separation, you have ducts for example, so you will have ducts on, on one way the heat hot exhaust can go only in one half, top half for example, the cold air will come from the bottom half. You make design in such a way that the cold air is let us say coming from the bottom half, the hot is going from the thing and this wheel is rotating, it is a perforated type of a wheel or there can be fins which rotate. So, they are metallic. So, immediately they get heated and there it is rotating. So, it goes to the cold area, the heat gets exchanged. So, it is rotating wheels while the hot air goes from one side, the cold air goes on the other side and the heat exchange takes place. So, low to medium uh, temperature waste recovery systems, uh, sufficiently efficient but not very high, but not too bad either. You can look at about people claim that about 85 percent efficiency can be seen. So, it all depends on how many fins, what is the perforation level, how much contact area actually, you can large number of fins. So, this wheel keeps on rotating. So, hot portion of the wheel goes to the cold portion. The hot air makes this top portion for example, here as a hot continuously and this continuously gets cooled because the cool air is coming from the other side, continuous thing. Of course, there can be some contamination because they are fine perforated or fins you have to clean time to time, but it will be interesting way of heat exchange. The another interesting uh, heat exchanger which is a sealed tube type where the there is a liquor which is let us say low boiling point liquor, right? Low boiling point liquor. The moment the hot air comes, it evaporates and evaporates and goes to the other side. Let us say it starts moving on the top, right? The vapor. There it meets cold air and it meets cold air. For example, this is the cold air area, this is the hot area. So, whenever it contacts the hot area, the liquid evaporates, it goes as a vapor, the cold air comes in contact, it immediately condenses. So, this condensation evaporation is use of latent heat, right? So, it is using both ways, evaporation more heat is taken because of the latent heat and more heat is given out because of condensing. Very interesting, nothing goes out of this system only surface is being touched, the liquor is going up and down. Uh, you, you have capillary wicking systems here, the liquor can wick down by gravity or otherwise by capillary action. And this working fluid as we said is low boiling point. 
So, and this can be decided on what temperature are we talking about. Very efficient heat transfer system and uh, contamination does not take place because there are hardly any moving parts also, just the gas is being sucked in or forced out. And therefore, you do not need to change because a sealed system, nothing comes out of the sealed system, no contamination generally. Very nice, beautiful system. So, there are other systems also which can be used, but one thing is clear, we must recover waste heat, okay. So, I am just leaving you with an exercise, you can do it whenever you are time. So, because the heat energy and everything is there, so there is let us say stenter which is uh, running at some speed called the x uh, meters per minute, uh, drying a fabric which has got some GSM, let us say G, has got some width which is W and got some expression, now we know expressions can be this or that, let us say some expression which is E percent to be dried to let us say it is natural moisture content which is M percent, complex right every parameter is here. And what do you want to find out? You want to find out the energy required, let us say in kilo calories to evaporate the water, let us say in an 8 hour shift, the continuous machine is running for 8 hours and then you want to find out how much energy is going to be consumed uh, in evaporating this water something. Some more data, helpful data I am just pushing it. You can remember while you are solving approximately 9 kg of air would be required, fresh air would be required to evaporate let us say 1 kg of water, you can assume this. Then the specific heat of water will be required, specific heat of fabric will be required, specific heat of air will be required, the specific heat of steam will be required depending on what are you doing, what temperature the fabric is coming out, what is the temperature of the let us say stenter which may be more than 100 degree centigrade, uh, the latent heat of vaporization, uh, the temperature of the stenter uh, can be more than thing, so 100 degree centigrade, so you have temperature stenter. Temperature of the fabric is the same as that of stenter that is Ts and the temperature let us say is measured in degree centigrade. So, if this is the data with you, can you fill up any kind of values and keep calculating uh, the, the amount of energy required to evaporate water uh, through a stenter, okay. You can call this any drying machine for that matter, right. So, what have we learned? That there are many processes finishing and other wet processing unit operations where hot exhaust or hot waste water is generated, right. One must not let the heat go to the environment which is very unwise. Heat exchangers can be involved, installed in the process systems. Various types of heat exchangers are available. One some of which some some we have discussed. So, you can always choose a suitable exchanger for your own processes, but must use. In the next class, we shall consider principles of some of the finishing machines, you know. Uh, this course is on finishing, but not on finishing or processing machines, but just to get a glimpse as to what type of machine some of you already know, uh, we just discuss a little bit in the next class. Till that time, all the best, see you.